Scorpio. Hello, Scorpio. This is your forecast for February 2014. And uh, this month now is going to start off here really powerful in the area of communication. Could have also something to do with your siblings, uh, some interaction or some uh, perhaps financial situations as well that you might want to be uh, discussing. Could have to do with your neighbors. Uh, there might be an issue, but the issue isn't all that bad, but it is money oriented. Uh, or value oriented. Now those of you traveling, uh, at least a short distance travel, looks like here at the top of the month that that could be good. It could be quite intense in some sense, only because when Venus and Pluto meet, they really uh, pack a powerhouse and you'll be feeling it. So whatever it is, you know, for, for better or worse, but here in the third house, it's the communication it's what you communicate, how you communicate it, and how it's being received on the other end. So make sure that you're listening also to what your uh, either partner or your neighbor or your sibling is saying, that you can listen to the message that is buried there. See, Venus has been going retrograde here since December 21st. Uh, there might have been something here within this area that came up. Maybe there wasn't a resolve. Maybe January has uh, needed these weeks of the retrograde to get things uh, more balanced between the two of you. But here, January 31st, Venus is moving direct again. So when we start off top of the month here, February, you might now start feeling that you can take a deep breath and it's like, good, we're here. We made it through, we negotiated, and now things can really start healing, all right? This is why it's good. And uh, in this area too, like I said, short distance travel, um, these two planets are in the sign of uh, Capricorn, uh, so you might just feel that this is a time for you to really put your values structurally down, um, emotionally. This is Venus, it's the heart, uh, it's all that intensity and sensuality too here with Pluto. And so you might just find that there is uh, more of an emotional, uh, romantic, uh, sensual type of communication that Capricorn is wanting to ground between you and a loved one as well. All right, very important there. So we have the sun, we also have the new moon in the fourth house. Let me just talk a little bit about this new moon here because it was new here on the 30th. So it was more in January. January held two new moons and a full moon. February we have no new moon. Uh, but it, it's still itty bitty here, just trying to grow, and it's still in your first, uh, fourth house, I'm sorry, with the sun. So uh, for your um, February intentions, and you're watching this on the January site, make sure you put down those intentions there for January 30th. In the area of home, property, real estate, family, uh, or even the past, you know, history that you have, uh, and maybe uh, thinking that you'd like to spend more time, more focus in this area, great time to do that, January 30th. But the influence, like I said, it's still moving through that same area uh, here February 4th, and then it's gonna start dabbing off a little bit. So that only means we have one moon this month in uh, February, and that is the full moon on Valentine's Day. And for you here, Scorpio, it's gonna be in the 10th house, so that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a romantic day. You probably surely will. Um, but there's also something coming to you here around this time <clears throat> through the area of career. And it might just be something you've been working for. Some of you might have been uh, awaiting uh, feedback, maybe a review. Uh, this would be a great time for that to come around because it's harvest time with these full moons. And uh, it now being here between the uh, 10th house and the 4th house, that's between the area of uh, career and uh, home, family. So it might also just be that you're going to start seeing that there's a balance there that you will focus on here mid-month. Whatever this full moon is bringing to you, you want to pay attention to the 15th uh, when the Sun and Mars is trying, which is an excellent, excellent uh, angle. 
Mars is your power, your drive, your ambition, your goals, your physical uh, energy, and it is powering up your sun. So in this case, I see that you're ready to start anything new beginnings. Uh, for those of you perhaps in a new job, that would be a good thing. Mars for you is in the 12th house, and it's going to remain here for several months. And let me just spend a little moment here explaining what that's going to do for you. The 12th house is the inner self. It is your spiritual uh, needs, your, your higher needs. It, it's a feeling of wanting to kind of pull back from the world a little bit. Um, and it's going to be here until summer. Normally, Mars takes six weeks to, to pass through a sign. Uh, this Mars passing through Libra will be eight months all in all, right? So we got seven more months of it here. And, and so being in the 12th house, Mars is actually asking you to focus on those deeper needs that the soul and spirit requires. So it's perhaps looking to the past. It's also the house of karma and healing. It is opening up perhaps your higher chakras, time to meditate, do some yoga, replenish your batteries. It's like having a long six, seven month spa time for yourself here. So you may not feel that your drive, which you normally have a lot of Scorpio, uh, Mars is one of your co-rulers here, uh, and so when it's in the house of uh, Pisces, um, it's also asking you to look at your creative aspects, talents, and skills. Maybe you can have a little bit more time where you can step away from the world and focus on it. Maybe you want to write. Maybe you want to paint. Maybe you want to dance. Those things where life went by too fast and you always thought you'd love to do this or that never gave yourself time well here it is a big present from cosmos to you now you can take time and you'll see how the universe is going to pull you back from other responsibilities now so that you have this beautiful room just for you it's very private it's kind of behind the veils is what you're going to be working with right now so then we also have Mercury. Mercury is going to go retrograde on us this month. It is from the 6th <clears throat> throughout the 28th. And as always, when we have Mercury retrograde, we don't want to sign contracts. We don't want to buy new electrical appliances. We know they go haywire. Any kind of deals, transactions might go backwards and backfire. So we, we want to chill this month with it. It's good. To, to do research, of course, uh, maybe even negotiate, but just as long as you don't sign before or after the 28th, or say March 1st, and better yet, when Mercury moves out of its shadow, which will be on March 20th. So Mercury for you, it's starting off here in the beginning of the month in the fifth house for children, love and romance, self-expression, having fun. You'll have that up till the sixth, then it's gonna start retrograding, and by the 11th, it will move back into the fourth house. And then you're gonna be um, revisiting issues that you had more here um, late December coming in through January. So anything that had to do with family, family issues um, and those things, they will come back up now looking for a resolve. Uh, for those of you, for example, uh, and had bought a house, you might look at things now that needs to be retweaked or, re or redone. And this is also because it rules real estate, property, and those things. And it's not a good time to sign any contract, of course, on real estate at this time. Now, we have uh, on the 11th, there is going to be a day here. Uh, it's the Sun uh, and your Saturn. <clears throat> so it's between where you stand, your own standpoint, uh, where you're firmly planted on the ground, uh, also from past conditionings, uh, you'll see now that there's going to be a situation coming up and it's going to challenge you a little bit as opposed to where you've been in that format where you see yourself in the past and to where you are today, all right? So the Sun and Saturn, Saturn's in your first house, so it has to do with your persona and the way you kind of show it out towards life you might feel that you've been that much more serious, maybe a little bit more somber, uh, just due to, to, to the weight of Saturn being on your shoulders. Um, and so you're kind of looking at 
what you want to do between what is important for you and what is important for the family. So the fourth house is family and they might have their needs. Saturn in the first house is saying, well, I got my needs too. I need to cater to them. And then especially because Mars here, like I said, in the 12th house, needing to replenish batteries, needs to uh, heal a little bit and, and do personal things that, that can actually charge your energy. So you will see on the 11th, there's a situation uh, here and that will be discussed, but maybe not resolved quite yet, because we have a second date coming up for you, which will be February 19th. Then you'll revisit what you spoke about on the 11th. And I think at that time, you've had a little bit uh, more insight or, or a little time to uh, consider direction. Because in the meanwhile there, we have that Sun and Mars uh, trying beautiful angle, by the way, on the 15th where you're connecting personally with your personal drive, which is Mars, and figuring out what you want to do there in that 12th house, that creative spiritual house. And once you've found it, then you're more readily able to uh, communicate this. And uh, so it's more like you might negotiate and say, hey, listen, okay, I'll do this, 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 and that here for the family, but then this is what I'm going to take off or take out time for me uh, because I need this self-healing or this replenishing energy and I see it being received in a good way all right so come the 20th you're gonna feel a uh, pretty good very resolved found your balance and uh, then your hopes and dreams are starting to lift and rise here on the 23rd when you start off on something uh, quite creative this is the meeting between the Sun and Neptune and Neptune being in Pisces, the Sun moved into Pisces on the 18th. So put those two together here in your fifth house. That has everything to do with self-expression, creativity. Maybe you're going to start uh, off on something new, maybe pan uh, painting, dancing, um, writing, something here that feeds spirit, see? Because if we're just working, 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 like Saturn now is, you know, creating that heaviness in you, uh, that Saturn in the first house of personality, if we don't do the fun things, the good things, and feed that inner child, which is this fifth house, well, then the inner child is suffering and starting to rebel, but now you're starting to give soul food with your self-expression, the fifth house self-expression there, with creative Piscean things to do, well, you're going to feel like you are renewed. And then see here, this is the very area that uh, Mercury is going to visit first on top of the month into this fifth house. And then by the sixth, slowly but surely, it's going to start moving back out, retrograding. So by the 11th, it's back into the fourth house of family needs and so forth. And here you're going to try to figure out uh, where and what to do. So the resolve will be coming to you by the 23rd. Then I see you kicking into action with that. You are just such a happy camper come to, uh, February 25th with Venus now being in a great alignment with Saturn. Saturn's the one that's crying out to be understood, to be seen, to be felt, to be heard, um, that, that your circumstances can see that, that and understand even more so why you're putting up your rings. Okay, Saturn has rings. so. They might have felt that you're pushing away, but it's not because you want to push away people or circumstances, but those rings are just saying, I need my personal space. Now I think that the, the your, your outer circumstances and the world at large are finally getting it, finally seeing that there is that need for you and they're honoring this space. You're feeling empowered and you're feeling that like finally now everything is coming up to the surface so you don't have to feel bad or guilty on top of this feeling of exhaustion. <laughs> now that was a long uh, line there, but I think you get my drift though. So uh, Scorpio, I'm really happy to see what is taking place for you here in your chart February because it, it's like breaking away from the old patterns. That's what January is all about. 
saying I'm not doing this because I can no longer do it. But that's only those things that you no longer want to do, right? Uh, so that's a good thing. But it takes a little time to bring in the new uh, arenas. And February is just like opening up very slowly but surely. And then it's setting you all up for acceleration, which you will now feel when we do next month's forecast in March. Uh, Jupiter is uh, retrograde up in your ninth house. But even though she's retrograde, she's still being very supportive of you. Uh, as if you're, you're hearing, uh, channeling these uh, intuitions of don't stop, keep going, keep yearning, keep longing, keep growing out there. Spirit needs my time. Because that is in the, the ninth house of higher thinking, spirituality, uh, the big picture of all. And Jupiter rules this house, so double strong, even though it's uh, retrograde to April 8th. But see, I, I see how you're, you're reaching out for the, that higher picture of what the universe now wants to give you. And it's directly communicating, see, to your 12th house Mars with new goals and directions. And where the gift of God now is with you until uh, July, June, July, when Mars is going to be in that 12th house area, uh, which is ruled by Pisces, Neptune, creativity. You got the fifth house with Neptune there, creativity, spirit, and you got Jupiter up here in the ninth house. All of them are working together because you're so responsible, Scorpio, that you haven't taken time for you. Now it's time for you to come out and dance, to come out and laugh, to come out and play. You just need to get a little energy so you can start laughing and you will be laughing sooner than you know once again. So this is your forecast for February 2014. Go listen to your moon and your rising sign and then uh, subscribe so you get your March forecast. Bye now.